taking a slight reprieve in the town of Tristram from battling the forces of hell, we happen upon a curiosity. Behind Griswold's blacksmith and just south of the fork leading to Adria's shack, we find a festering nest of some kind. Otherworldly tendrils protrude from the ground and a cracked cyst bubbles in its center. Seemingly composed of unnatural flora, we don't exactly understand what it is, if a plant at all, but it seems menacing and blocks our path nonetheless. We have also heard whispers of a farmer named Lester to the north who's new to town thanks to the Hellfire expansion and has been asking around about the aberration. Heading north and following the river, we find Lester, an inconspicuous farmer wearing a straw brim hat, overalls and rocking on his heels as if unawares or unconcerned of hell itself terrorizing the lands and the town of Tristram. He's only concern the safety of his trio of cows. If we decide to approach him before reaching level two of the dungeon, he says, I need something done, but I couldn't impose on a perfect stranger. Perhaps after you've been here a while, I might feel more comfortable asking a favor. After reaching level two of the dungeon and returning to Lester once more, he then weighs, Oh, such a trouble I have. Well, maybe... No, I, I couldn't impose on you, what with all the other troubles. Maybe after you've cleansed the church of some of those creatures, you could come back and spare a little time to help a poor farmer? If we decide to seek out Lester again after reaching the catacombs, he hints. Oh, I could use your help, but perhaps after you've saved the catacombs from the desecration of those beasts. After reaching level seven of the catacombs, he commends. I see in you the potential for greatness. Perhaps sometime while you are fulfilling your destiny, you could stop by and do a little favor for me? It's only after reaching level nine of the caves and level 15 will Lester finally seek out aid, saying, So, you're the hero everyone's been talking about. Perhaps you could help a poor, simple farmer out of a terrible mess? At the edge of my orchard, well, just south of here, there's a horrible thing swelling out of ground. I can't get to my crops or my bales of hay, and my poor cows will starve. The witch gave this to me and said that it would blast that thing out of my field. If you could destroy it, I would be forever grateful. i do it myself, but someone has to stay here with the cows. It's then we receive the quest, The Farmer's Orchard, and a rune bomb from Lester to aid him in freeing the path for his ailing cows. If we head south to the nest and are unable to work the rune contraption, I can't cast that here. We can then again ask Lester once more for clues on how to destroy it, but he simply laments. I knew that it couldn't be as simple as that witch made it sound. It's a sad world when you can't even trust your neighbors. So, it was Adria the witch who gave him the rune and instructions. We can try to get an explanation from Adria directly. I sense a soul in search of answers. But she doesn't seem to recall the bomb whatsoever. And so, after much confusion, we take the rune bomb from our inventory and toss it at the center of the throbbing mass of tendrils. And it explodes in a heap of vile gunk and ichor, oozing from its exposed maw. We then rush back to Lester and he thanks. I heard the explosion from here. Many thanks to you, kind stranger. What with all these things coming out of the ground, monsters taking over the church and so forth, these are trying times. I'm but a poor farmer, but here, take this with my great thanks. Once the bomb has gone off successfully, we can return to Lester and he will drop the Auric Amulet, an item that is specifically being added to Hellfire. It's worn in the amulet slot and doesn't provide any stat bonuses, but it does allow our character to carry over 10,000 gold per slot, up from 5,000 gold in Vanilla Diablo, when the amulet is equipped. This makes it possible to save more gold from one game to the next and to purchase items that take up to six spaces in the inventory, such as full plate mail, that 
cost more than 170,000 gold, which was impossible in Diablo since the game required you to have enough free space to hold the item that you were buying even if your gold was going to go away in the transaction. So it is handy to have on your person. Although our quest of the farmer's orchard is now complete and we have a valuable item, we still have the wretched hive to contend with. Fearing for the safety of the inhabitants of Tristram, we then head to the hive, looking inside its disgusting, oozing hole and realize there is in fact a cave system below. Stealing our resolve and holding our breath, we wriggle our way inside. Upon entering, we hear, We have long lain dormant, and the time to awaken has come. After our long sleep, we are filled with great hunger. Soon now we shall feed. Echoing from the putrid chamber itself, we're immediately warned by an unknown entity of an incoming threat from a being who has laid dormant till now and intends to feed on us and perhaps the townsfolk above. As then we get a better look at our surroundings, the green walls drip with a gooey webbing. The hole in which we entered resembles, for lack of a better word, an anus. Vestigial growths protrude from the ground, bordering on the lewd and unseemly, and the ground itself is ridged like a brain, and porous tubes trigger our trypophobia. Stepping through the sludge, we see a green acid pool as a gaggle of inhabitants come to contend with an unwanted intruder or perhaps snack. The shredded appear as wispy undead mummies, more wrappings and air than solid, giving us no end of trouble slashing through their ethereal form. Stingers whip their venomous tails at our heels, looking like something straight out of the thing or aliens. And the bloated fell twin, a two-headed beast cries out as we pierce its globby flesh. As they fall, they leave us to hack almost impotently at their shredded brethren. Once successful, we head north once more, looting a chest only to be charged by horned hellbores, gifted with a ridiculous amount of knockback, and they send us reeling throughout the cavern and into a new enemy, the spider-like arachnon. Once unimpeded, we search the area and find, instead of barrels, the nest is adorned with fleshy pods guarded by the denizens therein, and they sometimes bequeath items exploding in a gunk similar in fashion to the nest entrance above. After some searching, we find the second level of the hive. Once inside, we see it's browner than its counterpart, and as we move to check, a nearby chest are immediately pelted with blue streams of magicka. The source are tentacled psycho orbs with giant reptile-like eyes. These drones too seem to be guarding the now fully active breeding ground of whatever creature had warned us of our impending demise. As we press on through the level, we're then assaulted by bouncing hawk spawn, round testicular creatures with sinister grins. We cannot help but wonder, what is spawning these creatures? Is it hell itself, or is it happenstance? We've disturbed a peculiar and alien race of beings, or if we're just uneducated on how diverse the biology of flora and fauna that Sanctuary boasts. It's then, when entering the third level of the hive, we are more fully regaled with man's impending doom from an unknown yet malevolent entity. And our brood shall overrun the fields that men call home. Our tendrils shall envelop this world and we will feast on the flesh of its denizens. Man shall become our chattel and sustenance. However, it's not until the fourth level, after clearing out the sentries, do we come face to face with the Baleful Presence, known only as their promise of the woes to come, the Defiler. Come closer, morsel. I smell your terror, and I hunger. 
The insectoid defiler rushes us, sporting 10 limbs, with 8 for piercing our hide alone, looking like a hybrid of a millipede, a praying mantis, and an unholy reptile standing 10 feet tall. It backs us into a nearby acid bath, raining down blows on us. However, Shield held high and sword arm at the ready, we press our own assault, jabbing Griswold's edge through its scaly abdomen as it sprays yellow ichor on the ground. Now a dead, crumpled husk. <laughs> on its corpse, we find, what's this? A cathedral map. Unsure of the symbology of a bounty it was protecting, we portal out of the oozing hollowed hive and back to safety. It's then we seek out Lester the farmer for guidance once more, but he disappeared, and there's no sign of how he vanished. Our only clue is the map, but that is a story for another time.